Our next Lion legend is Laura Bellinger, a native of Kalamazoo, Michigan. She will be inducted into the 32nd class of the UNA Athletic Hall of Fame on October 16th. She was a three-year starter on UNA volleyball teams from 2004 to 2006, where she helped lead UNA to a 95-14 record in three seasons, while earning All-American honors twice to go with three All-Gulf South Conference selections. As a junior, she led all of NCAA Division II in total assist and finished her career averaging 13.33 assists per game. In 2006, she was named the Gulf South Conference East Division Player of the Year while finishing as a finalist for National Player of the Year. She led UNA to three consecutive Gulf South Conference championships and was the MVP of the 2006 GSC Tournament. Finally, she was on UNA's 2006 NCAA Runner-Up Team. Laura Bellinger, thank you for being our next Lion Legend. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You are going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame in just a short couple of months. When you received that phone call letting you know that you had been inducted, what was the feeling? A little overwhelmed. I mean, I haven't been a UNA volleyball player for over 10 years, and I just, it's kind of in the background of life now, but it was, it made it more omnipresent, and it was just such an honor. Um, and I consider it an honor for the entire team um, that I played with and the coaching staff, so it was just kind of overwhelming. Three years at UNA playing, a red shirt year as well. You guys had an unbelievable run. We're going to dive into your career, but the University of North Alabama, what does this place mean to you? It's a second home. Um, it's really where I grew up a lot. It's always nice to come back. I'm excited to come back in October for the Hall of Fame induction. Um, some of my family is going to come with me, so it, it just it was such a growing and learning place for me. It will always be a part of me and a, a home that I can come back to. Before we jump into your UNA story, give fans an update on where life has taken you to this point. Well, I, um, I live in the Detroit metro area. Um, I am a, a registered nurse now, um, worked through the COVID um, pandemic that we're still going through um, in the ICUs um, and took care of some of the sick of the sick when we were going through the surges. Um, now I work with um, people who have gone through catastrophic traumatic uh, accidents, whether in the workplace or in a car, and help them get back to their daily lives. So it's, it's really rewarding um, helping people recover on their worst day and get back to living. So let's jump into it. Growing up in Michigan, what was your introduction to volleyball? Uh, both my sisters played. They were both setters. Um, I learned from them and watching them, and then I'd always just grab a ball and play against the wall or with other kids my age, and um, it was just a part of life. We went to tournaments every weekend, and um, it just it was it was fun and exciting and a great team sport. So it was always a part of life. Let's talk about your high school career, Portage Northern High School. You were a highly decorated volleyball player, an All-American, a state championship, runner-up as well. How can you put into words what the high school volleyball experience was like for you? Um, so I actually transferred from my freshman to sophomore year um, from neighboring high schools, and I, I transferred into a program that was highly decorative. Um, they'd already won eight state championships in the past 15 years. Um, so it was great to be a part of that. The coach was renowned as one of the best in the country. Um, and so being a part of that program highly helped me get better and get to where I was and coming to UNA. Um, it was amazing runs at uh, state championships and runners up and great teammates. I, I couldn't, I wouldn't want to change it for the world. And when did you start receiving attention from colleges to let you know, hey, I can go play volleyball at the next level? <laughs> well, my hometown school actually offered me a scholarship when I was eight, <laughs> and I thought they were kidding, um, but apparently they weren't. And uh, about my sophomore year, um, they, they started uh, writing letters and recruiting me, um, and it was an interesting experience, and I'm still glad I found a home at UNA, though. Now, who was the hometown team? Uh, Western Michigan University. They're in the MAC up in Division One. So your recruiting journey to UNA, you go to the United States uh, Military Academy, your time at Army. Give us the story about how you go from Army to Florence, Alabama and UNA. Well, I, I told myself if I got into West Point, I would go and I got in. So I went <laughs> and it was a great experience and I loved it. Um, I just, you know, my time there, uh, I, I broke my leg and became um, medically ineligible to serve in the army and decided that, you know, that I should probably leave because I'm just taking a slot now. Um, and then I started the recruiting process all over again. Um, so I, I looked at a couple of schools, but 
when I visited here, um, it was a whole other world when I got off that plane. And um, I stayed with uh, Lindsay Mohan, who was on the 2004 and 2003 teams and met all the girls. And um, it just, it was a perfect fit from day one. You arrive at UNA in 2003. That was the national championship season. More on that in just a second. But prior to that year, UNA had won seven straight conference tournament championships, a highly decorated program, a lot of success. Did that tradition play a role in getting you to Florence? Yes, I am a highly competitive person. I want to play to win. Um, and so that was definitely on the bucket list of, of when I'm playing college sports. I want to play to win. I'm not going to a team where we're just going to be average. There needs to be some focus on doing well. So very much so. You redshirted that first season in 2003, and that happened to be the year UNA won the national championship. What was it like for you, redshirt, watching that team and all the accomplishments? Um, I still felt a part of it, even though I wasn't on the court when it happened. I practiced with those girls every day. I helped prepare them for that, and they did an amazing job. I traveled to San Bernardino um, to watch it happen and cheer them on. So it was it was still a great experience. Um, I, I'm still friends with some of the girls on the team. Sasha, Selby, and I talk, you know, all the time. So I'm, I'm happy to have been a part of it in some small way. So UNA wins the national championship, and then things start to change as you're getting set to be eligible in 2004. First off, the head coach, Matt Peck, leaves for Middle Tennessee State. UNA hires Stephanie Radecki. An interesting story, I believe you were on the search committee that hired Coach Radecki. So being a player, having that input, how, how cool of an experience was that? It was really cool. Actually, Steph and I still talk and I found my notebook when we were um, interviewing the coaches and I, I gave it to her to like see what we said about her in the initial interview and we were unanimous and that we loved her. So it was great that she had already been a coach at UNA as a graduate assistant. She seemed invested. She wanted to carry on the tradition that the program already had. So we, we were happy to have her and it was a good transition. First year for you guys, 2004, you go 24 and seven. And first off for you individually, you had a tough task of replacing an all American setter in Ashley Moffitt. You returned to the court. What was it like getting back? Did you feel any pressure? I think growing up in the sport and having been in highly competitive situations before, no, I was just excited to be back at the home and um, doing what I felt most comfortable doing. I feel comfortable on a volleyball court and it was, it was a natural transition. Ashley finished her time. She passed the reins on to me and it was, no, I think it was a great transition. No pressure felt. And we're going to talk about your great three-year run as setter, but the next thing I want to ask you, of course, you were there in 2003, national championship run. UNA always has great crowds for volleyball matches. What was it like for you when you finally got to play in front of those packed out, passionate fans? It was great. You always felt great support from the community. Um, after receiving the Hall of Fame nod, uh, a bunch of the community members actually reached out and told me congratulations. They're still invested in the success of the program, which is great to know. Um, it, it was just a great environment to play in. Flowers Hall is, is a wonderful environment. It, it brings the fans close and they're right there. But um, no, I enjoyed every second of it. GSC Championship, your, your first year getting to play in 2004. NCAA Tournament appearance as well. Was there anything that stood out your first year getting to play? I was just happy to be back on the court. I don't know. Um, I think big matches, it was always Harding was fun to you know play and beat. Um, and then when you got to the regionals, um, we just didn't see them that much. So I, I enjoyed playing Truman in Central Missouri. Um, it was it was amazing to play with uh, some of my roommates at the time, D. Ayers and Vanessa Fahechi and Sasha again. Um, so it was just a fun experience. We're going to get to some of those schools you were just rattling off momentarily. Certainly some 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 great moments. 2005 rolls around and it was a big year for you. 1,910 total assists. You led the nation in total assists. Being as competitive as you are, how much pride do you take in that NCAA statistical individual championship? Uh, I actually didn't even know I had won it until a couple of years later. <laughs> um, being a team sport, it was more the focus on like the team, the team championships and like losing in the regional kind of overshadowed um, an, an individual statistic championships. So, I mean, it, it's all gravy, but it wasn't the focus. You tied a, or set a GSC record and a school record with 14.36 assists per game. You've rattled off some great players that you played with, but tell us about that offense, the chemistry, some of the great ones that you got to play with. 
My favorite was 2006 um, because we were so well balanced. Um, I could set anybody on that front row or even in our back row players and you could trust them to be successful. Um, I, when having Megan, you know, right behind me, I didn't feel that I had to get up there and set because Megan uh, Stout was a setter too. So I could focus when I was in the back row on defense and she could set the offense as well. But then she could turn around and be an offensive weapon. Every single one of the players on that team could be an offensive weapon. So that was definitely my favorite. Um, and I think that was why we were so successful too. So you guys win the Gold South Conference Championship 3-2 to two over Harding. Then you get to host the NCAA South Regional Tournament in Florence, Alabama. Do you remember the, the feeling of pride you guys had getting to host that in your home gym? Yeah, it was amazing. We were happy to extend our home court advantage season for the seniors, Sasha and Vanessa. Um, it, was, it was definitely a little bit of a disappointing end when we just didn't um, capitalize on it. But it was really awesome to bring a regional home. We're going to circle back to that regional momentarily as we jump into the 2006 season. But but your senior year, let's set the stage. You arrive as a red shirt. You guys win the national championship. You've won the Gold South Conference tournament, but you haven't had the success in the NCAA tournament yet. That, that final run in 06, how motivated were you guys to get back there? Very. I think um, it was all our own doing in 2005 that we lost that. I don't think that Central Missouri beat us. We lost that match. So it was a bit of, you know, we needed to come back from that and really prove that we could do it. Um, so going into that regional tournament, um, we knew it was a tough lineup. I mean, Truman was number one in the country. Um, but even when we were down two games to nothing in that set, we still felt like we were in control. And I remember in that um, huddle right before game three started, we we're like, okay, this is our national championship match. Let's just play. And it kind of took the monkey off our back of like, okay, if we lose this match, we're done. And then we just played and it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> well, let's talk about Truman State, Central Missouri. In 05, Central Missouri beats you guys. Truman State goes on to win the regional. So 06 rolls around and you guys played a super tough schedule. So I want to back up to the regular season, the Washburn Lady Blues Classic. You guys go one and three there, but, but here were the matches you guys played. A loss to number five, Minnesota Duluth, number four, Truman State, and number nine, Washburn. I mean, that's a brutal start, but take us back to that tournament, the tough matches. What you remember with that setting the tone? I mean, you guys started seven and five that year. I think those losses early in the season were actually really important. Um, first off, we weren't gelled as a team yet. Um, Nilcia Oliveira had just flown in from Brazil and she just wasn't at the top of her game yet where she was at the end of the year. She was, you know, just not quite there. I think Megan Stapp was out with injury. Um, so one of our libero um, defensive specialists, uh, Jessica Hansen was playing outside hitter and did a great job, but um, we just, we weren't up to speed yet. And I think those losses, um, helped us get better and learn how we needed to play and be strategic. So I think again, they, they're not fun, but they are good for us. So you guys get rolling you individually, the accolades continue to pour in an all American that season. And also you're the Gold South conference East division player of the year. You guys had lost the, the two time player of the year, the season prior in Vanessa Hetchy. So for you senior year, how did it feel to take home that honor given some of the players you'd lost? Um, any honor is wonderful, but being a team sport, it really belongs to the team. Like my name might be on the plaque, but I wouldn't have gotten it if we didn't have the team chemistry and been successful. So it's, it's very nice and I'm appreciative, but it belongs to, to you and I and to the team and to the coaching staff. Finish up going 35 and six and let's jump into the postseason run. You guys win the Gulf South Conference Tournament. Again, I believe that was hosted in Florence. Your final run in your name tournament MVP. You sort of swept the MVP awards in the Gulf South Conference, but winning it on your home floor MVP honors. How sweet was that? It was wonderful. I mean, having my family there and doing that in your senior year, it's just it's nice to win those those tournaments and wish we could have nationally championed you know finish that with that one you know it's always nice to win your last match but no it was it was very sweet again it belongs to the team and but great great times it was just a fun run okay let's jump into that final ncaa tournament run the, the regional that you guys went to was hosted by truman state in kirksville missouri so we've talked about truman state we've talked about central missouri you know all those schools are there they've ended your seasons the last handful of years what was the motivation for this team what do you remember the feeling being heading into that tournament 
excited. Um, I don't think we were ever nervous, um, but we knew at any moment, you know, the matches um, end. Sorry, <laughs> um, the matches end. Um, and so it can end your season. Uh, so that was kind of our motivating factor of we just need to stay focused and win each match as we go. Um, we knew that the, the first round wouldn't be easy with Pitt State. Um, they're a different kind of team. They run a different offense. So we, we prepared for them. And then looking, you can't look past Truman. We just went into each match as, you know, okay, this is where we are now. Let's focus here. But nothing but excitement and that we wanted to get to the national championship and then win it. I know you talked about that Truman State match. You guys are down 2-0, backs to the wall, in their home gym. You come back to win it 3-2. The feeling after that, you, you, the team that's had your number earlier that season, getting the revenge, what did that do for that team in the run coming up? That match, it honestly, is one of my favorites I've ever played. Um, I think it helped us build even more confidence. We just beat the number one team in the country. Um, there's really nothing that should stop us at this point. And now let's just have fun with it and, and, you know, play. Cause we knew we were playing well at that point. We were, we were balanced and clicking and everyone knew what the other person was going to do before they did it. It was just a really good team. That set up the rematch with central Missouri. Again, they ended your junior year in Florence. Did you guys have revenge on your mind as that match came up? I think maybe in the back corner, yes. But again, we tried to keep it big picture of, okay, yes, we, we do want to beat this team because they did end our season or, and we just, but you needed to focus on the match at hand. We needed to focus that it wasn't about revenge, and, but it was definitely there. <laughs> at that point, you guys have won 28 consecutive matches and you can take it a step further after dropping the first two to Truman State. You'd won 12 straight sets. How hot were you guys feeling heading into that championship? We were feeling great. We were just rolling. Everybody again knew what the other person was going to do. We were, we were at the top of our our athletic abilities, um, and then gelled together because of the losses that we had taken earlier in the season and everything that we had gone through as a team with injuries and um, other things outside the court. It was just we were firing on all cylinders. It was just a, such a fun run. It's really fun to kind of remember it too. <laughs> So again, your first year, you, you guys win the national championship, you've redshirted. Now your senior year, you're getting to go down to Pensacola, Florida. You've got a championship match against Tampa. But, but first, how great of a feeling was it getting back to that championship match? Amazing. I guess in the beginning of the season, no one really knew what to expect. Um, we lost, you know, two really important players to the team. And we had a lot of people coming in. I think we had five new players that year. So we none of us really knew what we were going to be in the beginning and and now we're setting up for a national championship and i think we all in the locker room just kind of looked around at each other right before the match and we're like all right this is cool let's just do it <laughs> so unfortunately you do fall to tampa but but still wrapping up your career second in the nation i know it was tough at the time but what's it like now looking back you know you again you always want to win your last match as an athlete um and that's hard <laughs> unfortunately i had some experience in it and running up um, in the state championship. We were runners up my senior year. So um, you just have to be proud of where you got. And again, you, you'd love to be the national championship or champions and, and win that last match, but it was, it was a great season and I'm happy where we ended. Now that team set 11 school individual career records during that run. You played with some great players. Megan Stout was an All-American. Ashley Hill, honorable mention. Daniel Palasek, all Gold South Conference. That team, just how much fun did you guys have playing together? It was great. It was, everyone just knew their role. And when things changed, you adapted. And everyone was in it for the team. Um, it really was a true team. I think, I think we've all played on teams where it wasn't, it didn't really gel. It never reached the height where it could if everyone would have come together. That team did. Um, we, I think that was the, the height of what we could reach. We did our very best. And so it's pretty easy to look back and say, I'm okay with being second in the country because I think we did the best we could. Stephanie Radecki was your head coach for your three years of getting to play. You went on to coach with her for two years. We'll get to that more in just a moment. But that time playing with Coach Radecki, what can you say about her and what she meant to you as a coach? She was fully vested in the program and each player. Um, she was a great coach. She was a great hire for UNA. 
Um, it was an honor to play for her. And I'm so happy that she interviewed so well and was so invested. And it was an honor to coach with her as well. I was super excited when she called me up one day. I was up living in Boston, I think, at the time. And um, she was like, hey, you want to come coach with me? And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And, <laughs> um, but no, she, she was such an integral part of that program and really helped keep on the tradition. So you come back and you coach in 2008 and 2009. Of course, you'd already graduated from North Alabama, but what's the story? What did you do after graduation and what ultimately led you coming back and coaching? Um, I worked for a public relations, which was what my degree was in um, firm. Uh, I worked for Fresenius Medical and I worked in their PR division for national accounts. Um, it was okay. Public relations was never really my passion. It was Kind of just something I did and um, I think I was always bound to be a nurse which is why I left coaching in the, the first place because I just needed to follow another dream but yeah. A highly decorated athlete at North Alabama and the honors didn't stop there. You were named to the Gold South Conference Team of the Decade for 2000 and 2009. UNA players accounted for five of the seven spots on that team. It's very remarkable and to see your name affiliated with that, but how much pride is it for the program to see that? It's a great honor. I mean, our team, I think, not to sound haughty, but like, we, we dominated the, the Gulf South Conference in those years. Um, I think West Florida picked it up at the end, um, but those the people who were honored on it, it's very well deserved. Um, those were the players that were the best in the decade for that conference. So it is an honor, but it's a, a testament to how good UNA Volleyball was in that decade. So for you, the, the Hall of Fame ceremony will come up in October. You'll get to get up. You'll have family there. You'll get to give the speech. But again, looking back at UNA, again, how can you just sum up your time here and what it all means to you? Gosh, I mean, it, it's it's a second home. I'm just so looking forward to coming home and seeing it and eating some rigatonis and um, listening to some awesome bands from Florence. And <laughs> if no one knows, I used to listen to Ben's band when he was playing. So he's trying to hide it right now. But we were talking about it the other day. He was, you guys should look it up. It's great. The Christmas album. <laughs> I, I did not ask her to do that. That was all on horror. <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for taking the time to reminisce with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.